Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about chapter 2, the periodic table. So in chemistry, the periodic table is really, really important. When you take your AP exam, you're going to have the periodic table next to you and you're going to be able to use it as a tool to solve problems. So for you to be able to use it properly, you really got to understand what it means and what the periodic table is showing you. So let's have a look. The periodic table of the elements. You have lots of pretty different boxes with different colors and different elements and different numbers. So in this lecture, in this lecture we're going to try to make sense of all of this and, and figure out what exactly this means. What is this chart trying to tell us? So what do we use the periodic table for? We use it to find specific information about the elements and to understand how the properties of the elements are related to each other. So there's a lot of trends in the periodic table. It's not just random. We can find patterns and it's very important for you to understand those patterns for the AP exam. So like I said, in the periodic table we find chemical and physical similarities between elements of the same group. We also find many other patterns and trends which are important to know. So here we have two guys that look the same. We'll be able to see in the periodic table a lot of times you'll have elements that aren't exactly the same, but they behave very similarly. So each box in the periodic table represents one element. Seems simple enough. And boxes in the periodic table are arranged in order of increasing atomic number. So in our last lecture, we talked about the atomic number and how it, it tells you uh, that it's the number of electrons in an atom and the number of protons in an atom. And it's often called Z. So if in a problem you ever see that an element's Z equals and then a number, you know Z is referring to the atomic number. So why are the number of electrons always equal to the number of protons? Well, if you think about it, if you have an element that's neutral, it's not an ion, it doesn't have a positive charge on it, it doesn't have a negative charge on it, you have to have the same number of protons on the inside and electrons on the outside to balance each other out. So the, the amount of positive charge in the nucleus is always going to equal the amount of negative charge outside. And this is what makes the atom stable. So, so the atomic number is going to tell you how many electrons and how many protons you have in an atom. Each box also shows an element's atomic symbol or name and an element's atomic mass, which is given in AMUs, or atomic mass units. So an element's symbol or name. That's important because in problems when we have, they're not always going to write out the name of the element. Instead of saying aluminum, they might just say AL. So you have to know that AL corresponds to aluminum so you can look it up in the periodic table. So you have to memorize these little nicknames as they are for the elements. Uh, and for atomic mass, you need to know how much mass there is in an atom. Some of them are really big and some of them are really, really small, like hydrogen. So the periodic table is going to tell you how big, how many protons, neutrons, electrons an atom has and what the mass is in, in AM use. That's the unit. So here's an example of a box in the periodic table. So we have the atomic number one. So hydrogen has one proton on the inside and one electron on the outside. It's the simplest of all the elements, just one and one hydrogen, smallest element in the periodic table. Uh, and the symbol name, H, H for hydrogen. Uh, and the atomic mass, 1.01. .01. So that's uh, in AMUs how much mass this atom takes up, how big it is. So now each row in the periodic table is called a period. So this, these